First of all, I just want to say this video is strictly for educational purposes. And if you get the chance to watch this video, go ahead and like, share, and follow. And don't forget, this is a bully free zone. I've been seeing so many videos of these Hebrew Israelites going around and talking bad about people, cussing at people. This is not of God. This is not how God operates at all. This is very demonic. So if you're seeing this today, do not operate in anything with the Hebrew Israelites. This is not of God. They're leading a lot of people astray. Please be watched. Please be warned. Share this video to everybody that so you know. Many videos of these Hebrew Israelites going around and talking bad about people, cussing at people. This is not of God. This is not how God operates at all. This is very demonic. So if you're seeing this today, do not operate in anything with the Hebrew Israelites. This is not of God. They're leading a lot of people astray. Please be watched. Please be warned. Share this video to everybody that you know. All right. This is going to be a response to this little weak, effeminate uh, Christian. Obviously, he's a Christian. or Just a, a weak, offended black man. The title of the video is going to be response this is not how God operates. Or Hebrew Israelites, this is not how God operates. All right. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. All right. So, yeah, let's just get right into it. So, again, the video is entitled Response This is Not How God Operates. This dude right here is his little 30 minute TikTok videos. You Christians are pathetic. You so called black people, a lot of you are pathetic and weak. You're emotional. You're all over the place. And really, the only thing that's wrong with you is the word of the Lord is, is hurting you, man. That's what the problem is. He showed now in the beginning, he showed a video of IUIC. All right, but you heard him say, I'm, I'm seeing so many videos of the Hebrew Israelites. So, you know, you're hearing that gospel. And really, you just never heard or seen anything like it because what's really hurting you is the truth. The delivery of it may come across as strong, but... That truth has really hurt you because you don't want to change your ways. You want to stay in the in the Babylonian mindset. And let's read a few scriptures. And these and we can read basic scriptures to, to, to destroy this guy. This is Isaiah 58, verse 1. Now he said that we talking bad about people, you know, we cussing at people and all of that, right? When you deliver the, the, the message of truth, you you don't always gonna you're not always gonna say nice things because see, in Babylon the Great. These people are set in their ways. Our people have become hardened and wicked. And they need to be jolted out of that mindset. And we're going to talk harsh. We're going to talk rough. Your little emotional self. And the white man did a good job of dumbing you niggas down. Giving you that weak ass watered down white Jesus love doctrine. Okay. But the Lord told us to do this. This is Isaiah 58 verse 1. It says cry aloud. A lot of you got a problem with us talking loud. You wants to pull you over into the corner and then, oh, Jesus, he loves you so much. Oh, God loves you. He wants you to come back. Man, fuck that. Okay? You got to come out of the wicked ways of Babylon the Great and you need to be told about yourself. And a lot of you people really just soft on the women. You soft on wickedness. The Lord said, and we gonna, let's read these scriptures. Cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not what? Spare not your feelings, your emotions. What are we supposed to do? Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. We're supposed to lift our voices up. What else? And show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So when you get told about yourself, when you get told about your transgressions and your sins, oftentimes it's not a nice thing. It's not nothing that's going to come out easy. And many people don't want to hear about it. You think that's criticism. Well, l listen to this. This is 2 Timothy 4 verse 1. I charge thee. Before the Most High and the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. What are we supposed to do? We got this charge from the Lord. Preach the word. When we preach the word, we're going to do these things. Be instant in season, out of season, which means we're going to be outside because the seasons affect the temperature. It affects what's going on. Here's the words. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. When you go into this first word, re reprove. <laughs> Excuse me. It's the it's the Greek word. <laughs> Damn it, a leg hole. Excuse me for that. It's the Greek word a leg hole. What does it mean? To convict, refute, confute. Generally, with the suggestion of shame of the person convicted. Wait a minute. You can't just go past that like it's not there. You're going to get on people so bad, they're going to be ashamed. They're going to be embarrassed. 
And a lot of you people don't understand this. Even Israelites don't get it. They hate rebuke. People just hate rebuke. But it's coming from the Lord for a purpose. You see? You saying we talking bad about people? We ain't talking bad enough about you. And it ain't like we saying anything personal about you. Generally, with, with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted. What else? By conviction to bring to light, to expose we're supposed to do this to find fault with. We're supposed to find fault with you. You see that? To find fault with. By word, in the word sense, to reprehend severely. Wait a minute. Are you sure I'm reading that? This is not of God. This is not of God. If you see anything in Hebrew, don't, don't, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. This is not of God. This is not how God offers you weak self. Reprimand. See that? Uh, reprehend, excuse me. And it says to reprimand. Let's get, let's get more here. Here it says, reprehend, to reprove or find fault with, rebuke, censor, or blame. Or blame. You see that? That's a that, that's a heavy word. Now, I can't get back. Uh, we just have to go bring it back up. All right, it's over here. Reprehend. Let's read that. Let's, let's find something else. Reprehend. Look at this. Reprehended, reprehending to voice disapproval of. So when we get on you about your behavior, about the way you live and about what you're doing and what you're eating, we reprehend you severely and you hate it. You don't want to hear it. Man, of course, it happens at least once a video. I knock the window right out. These phones so sensitive. We'll have it back up in a minute. <clears throat> and this is an ongoing thing. We know you're going and complaining about us, but you know what? We complain to the Lord about you. And who runs the earth? Who's who's earth? Uh, who authority is the earth in? Right now, it's given to the so-called white man Esau, but he can't overthrow what the Lord said do. So again, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See. So we, we, we have well within our right to get all over you. Now, back in the word of leg hole, it says, we were here, by word to reprehend severely, chide, admonish, reprove, to call to account, show one his fault, demand an explanation. See that? And then we even within our rights by deed to chasten or punish you, but we don't even do that. We don't, we don't chasten or punish you except verbally, but that... Gives a connotation of, of literally, it says by deed. So we don't even do that. To confute, admonish, convict, convince, tell a fault, rebuke, reprove. So before you open your mouth up, understand what you are saying. See, we get all over people, sure. But why do we do it? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. So what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to get all over them. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So when we make do this ministry work, people ain't going to like it. You're going to make these little complaints. You're going to cry and you're going to whine. But that's what we're supposed to do, though. So we know we're doing the right thing. But this guy here looking all like he's about to cry and shit. And you weak. How can you look at yourself in the mirror every day being that damn weak? This is Isaiah 49. Let's, let's show you another one. Isaiah 49 verse 1. Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. So the men that teach and preach, they will call from the womb to do this. What else? And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. What's a sharp sword do? It cuts you to the core. It cuts you to the soul. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. So the Lord got us speaking sharp words. Got us being harsh towards you. But not because we just being hateful. It's because of your iniquity. Hosea 6 and 5. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. What does hewed mean? It means chop. You being chopped. Our mouths are like sharp swords and you being chopped with the word of truth and you can't take it. See here, chop or cut something. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. 
I have slain them. Ooh, I have slain them. How? By the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. And I mean, that's very plain. So you saying this is not how God operates? You know, just the problem is you never, you never experienced any real prophets. All you've been around a little weak ass white man telling you all the all the good things and then this faggot doctrine that he got these weak ass preachers preaching to get your money. That's what you used to. You used to being going into a place where the music is playing all low or either loud, dancing and falling all over the floor, but ain't no real, ain't no real ministry work going on. See? So this soft world is getting hit. The soft uh, and then the thing that gets me is you come from a harsh environment where you kill one another. But as soon as we talk rough and come out of the scriptures, every one of you niggas is running on TikTok making videos like you so damn holy. You ain't got nothing. You ain't doing no works of righteousness. You ain't in no position to judge us. Jeremiah five fourteen. Wherefore, thus said the Lord, power of hosts, because you speak this word, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would, and it shall devour them. Is this guy not devoured up? Look at him. Little tattletale ass spirit. These niggas weak as hell, man. This is not a guy. It's not how God operates. How would you know, nigga? You ain't you don't even know the scriptures. You ain't bring no no scriptures out. All you're gonna do is try to find them little scriptures you keep trying to use to accuse us of cussing and you don't even understand it. I'm gonna give you one. This is Jeremiah 23, verse 29. It's not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So the word of the Lord is like a hammer. It's like a sharp sword. It's like a fire. I mean, what are you talking about here? It's not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. The word is like a hammer breaking a rock into pieces. You see? Now, oftentimes, Jake will run and holler about and people try to use these scriptures on the comment board and you just don't know what you're talking about. Listen to this. This is James 3 and 9. It says, I'm going to start at, at verse 8. It says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we the most high, even the father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of the most high. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing, my my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. This does not mean harsh language. If we go right here to Let's see, right here in James in 3.10, right? The same I preceded blessing and cursing. When you go to this word for cursing. Strong's G, 2671. Katara. Katara. Katara says curse, cursing, curse, right? An imprecation. So like a execration, imprecation or curse. What is the execration? It's to curse. Put a curse on someone. See, to feel or express great loathing for the act of cursing or denouncing the curse so uttered an object of curses. See that? When you go into that word execration and imprecation, same thing. Look up. It's the same thing. Same word. So it's putting curses on people. It's not harsh language. Imprecation, execration, curse. All right. That's that. When you go into, into uh, you know what, and that'll suffice. I was going to read this out about Peter, but we always bring that out. You just, you, really, you, you Christians are just super weak, all right? You're just effeminate. You're effeminate and you're weak. As a matter of fact, let's go right here to Yahweh Shai said, Matthew 15 and 8, 18. I'm going to jump in here at verse 17. This was dealing with unwashed. Uh, I believe it was dealing with. Uh, let's, let's just read it. Matthew 15, 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Yahweh shall say, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought? 
But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile a man. What are they? For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. See that? These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So he was speaking to them about uh, unwashed hands. See that? And there's other scriptures that back that up. I wanted to kind of. And see, Christians run. They love to run. They love to run to the way you talk as a reason not to listen. But really, you just, you're stuck in your own will. You want to do what you want to do. This is Mark 7. And we'll read. Uh, same. It's the same thought. 718 and he saith unto them are ye so without understanding also do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man it, and it it cannot defile him because it entereth not into his heart but into his belly and goeth out into the drought purging all meats and he said that which cometh out of the man that defileth the man for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornications Weak, uh, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come forth from within and uh, so like all these evil things come from within and defile the man, you see? So it's not harsh language. It's not so-called cursing. Mark 7 and 20. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. <clears throat> For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, death, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. So all this little raising up these little false reports against us, just trying to... to uh, Accuse us of something. You can do that all you want to. The problem is you don't like <clears throat> to be reproved of your weak of your behavior. This is Ephesians four twenty six. It says, "Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may." that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. What does this mean? Corrupt communication. It's speaking of false doctrine. Now, when you read these translations, it will try to lead you in towards uh, harsh language. Okay? Even when you go here in the word corrupt. But it's not what it's speaking of, especially when you take the whole Bible into account. It's not speaking of harsh language. The word is sopros. It says rotten, putrefied, corrupted by one and no longer fit for use, worn out of poor quality, bad, unfit for use, worthless. What is it speaking of? It speak, let, let, let's look at it. Rotten, i.e. worthless, literally or morally. See that? It's morally or literally. What's it talking about? False doctrine. Bad, corrupt. So you people are so weak. You don't know how much these Christians try to use scriptures like this. Corrupt communication does not mean harsh language. See? And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. The evil speaking is talking about what? Hatred. That type of stuff. When it comes to those in the faith, not against your enemies, not and when the enemies I'm talking about is the other nations. You see, now when we now the scripture just told us up top, be ye angry and sin not. Wrath is speaking of what? The anger that forces you or brings you to uh use your hands to do something. Let's look up wrath. It says anger, extreme anger. See, now we do get angry, but what did the scripture just say up top? It's not contradictory. Uh, be ye angry and sin not. The connotation is don't let your anger cause you to sin. 
See that? So you have to understand. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Does the, does the Bible contradict itself? No. You see? So it's telling you right here all these things, but it, it gives you indications of what? You rebuke people. You embarrass them. You lift up your voice. Right? You cut them to the soul with the word. So it's not contradictory. You have to understand the connotation in which it's speaking of. It ain't talking about don't talk rough. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as the Most High for, for Hamashiach's sake have forgiven you. This is people that's in the truth that you know are following the right way. Let's get one last proof. Let's go ahead and read it. When Peter was on the scene, he said harsh language, and he was a man of the Lord. This is, uh, I can't find it now. All right. Matthew 26 and 7, 73. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, <clears throat> Surely thou art also art one of them, for thy speech be read thee. She, this lady said, you was with the followers of Yahweh Shai. This is after they grabbed him up to take him, you know, to lock him up and then they later crucify him. This lady said, you was with him. You sound just like him. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. You see that? When you go into this word curse, it does give the indication of putting the curse on, but it is there too. The harsh language aspect is there as well, doggone it. Um, okay, to curse. What's the word? Strong's G 2653. Katathematizo. Katathematizo. Thayer's life. Matizo. That's a big word. It says to imprecate. Curse, right? To imprecate or curse, doggone it. Here, to utter curses against. And when you go further into it, the entire entry. I missed it. It's a lot there. Uttered out of malevolence. See that? Curse uttered out of malevolence. And that's going to be your harsh language. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. To utter curses against, right? To wish evil against a person or thing to curse. To speak evil. There you go. To speak evil. So Peter, <laughs> Peter was getting down. All right. And we're not saying that some pilot should just do that. You should just sit there and say every word you could think of. No, but if some if Mexican, a brother happens Kata anathematizo. Kata yeah, anathematizo. It was finishing the word off from before. So if somebody, you know, use some rough language, that doesn't mean that they're committing the sin. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. Let's see here, to swear. I hate to have to open this thing back up. Swear. Strong's G, 3660. I'm new. I'm new. Now, more than likely, he was saying, I, I swear I don't know him, you know. To swear, to affirm, promise, threaten with an oath. See that? So, really, he was using harsh language. He would tell him, lady, I don't effing know him. Or I don't, you know, however he said it. I don't want to say what he said because it doesn't say what exactly he said. All right. Let's see if a translation give it to us. Not that the, the translations go off. So. OK. Peter swore a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. See, see how the, these, these translations try to do NIV. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them. I know not the man. Immediately a, ro a rooster crowed. All right. So they then began he to curse and swear, I do not know the man, and immediately a rooster crowed. Now, we already said, or read it in the, uh, when you open it up, it said to speak evil. So anyway, that's just a quick video. You people got nothing to go on. This dude was so effeminate, emotional, and hurt behind some rough language. But that's a typical, this is what you have. This is the result of Christianity, a weak, neutered, 
a spayed and neutered, gelded black man. This is what Christianity does. It crushes your nuts and everything offends you because you're too damn weak, man. We'll see you again soon, Lord willing. Shalom.